Colitis and IBS are very similar and can have the exact same symptoms. In fact, historically, the words colitis and IBS were sometimes used interchangeably, and I've seen lots of patients given the diagnosis of colitis for IBS, but technically, there is one specific difference. All right, so what is the difference between IBS and colitis? So while these two conditions can have exactly the same symptoms, there's one clear distinction. Colitis literally means inflammation of the colon. So if you're diagnosed with colitis, it's likely that you went to a gastroenterologist and that they diagnosed you after doing a colonoscopy and finding inflammation in your colon. Now, if you didn't do this, then your doctor may be using the words IBS and colitis interchangeably, which used to happen a lot, but happens less these days. Now, IBS can also involve inflammation in the colon. And if you were diagnosed with IBS, you either weren't tested for inflammation the doctor saw it, but used the diagnosis of IBS instead of colitis, which is still accurate. Or you have the symptoms of IBS, but no inflammation was discovered in the colon. Now, are there different types of colitis? Well, it's important to note that there are many different types of colitis. There's ulcerative colitis, which is very distinct from IBS because it involves really visible ulcerations in the colon. And those are seen during a colonoscopy. That is not found in IBS. But there are also subtypes of colitis, and these are generally not visible during a colonoscopy. And these include microscopic colitis, lymphocytic colitis, eosinophilic colitis, collagenous colitis, pseudomembranous colitis, and others. Now, these are types of inflammation that are seen only under a microscope when a biopsy is performed during a colonoscopy. So over the years, we've had many patients come to us with these diagnoses, and they want to know if they can be treated. Well, fortunately, the answer is yes, they can. Now, these subtypes tell you more about the type of inflammation that is occurring but they don't tell you why that inflammation is occurring. And these types of inflammation, and while these different fancy names that I mentioned, they're associated with the same types of symptoms seen in IBS. So these patients still have, they have diarrhea, they have abdominal pain, they have cramping. They have the same kinds of things that IBS patients, and they have a tremendous amount in common with IBS. Now, diagnosing IBS versus colitis. So IBS is diagnosed purely based on reporting that you have the symptoms that are included in IBS. So you either have abdominal pain, you have diarrhea, you have constipation, you have gas or bloating, or you have some combination of those symptoms. Now colitis has the same types of symptoms, but colitis is usually diagnosed based on the finding of inflammation that's seen on a biopsy. So the biopsy is this little tiny piece of tissue. It's actually a, just a few millimeters thick, and it's a tissue sample that's taken during the colonoscopy. So during the colonoscopy, your doctor can actually take the little tissue samples. That tissue sample is then sent to the lab where it's examined under a microscope. So these different types of inflammation can be seen under the microscope, and that's how you get those diagnoses, whether it's eosinophilic colitis or or collagenous colitis or lymphocytic, those are different types of inflammatory markers that can be seen under the microscope. So that's how you end up with those kind of diagnoses. Now those are different types of inflammation. And then there's the words microscopic colitis, and that's a more general term that covers all of those because it covers any type of inflammation that's seen under the microscope. Now if you didn't have a biopsy, or if no damage was seen during the colonoscopy, then you're likely to end up with a diagnosis of IBS because IBS is a diagnosis of exclusion. It means that nothing else specific showed up, so your diagnosis is based on your symptoms that you reported. Now, can you have both IBS 
and colitis? Now, the short answer to this is yes. In fact, most people with colitis probably also have IBS because IBS is just a really big fancy umbrella term that covers having one or more of the symptoms that we mentioned, right? Diarrhea, abdominal pain, constipation, gas, or bloating. Now, colitis patients, off, they also have one of those symptoms. And the inflammation found in colitis means that whatever is irritating the colon has irritated it long enough or in such a way as to cause a, a specific type of inflammation. But in either case, whether it's IBS or colitis, the question is, why? Right? Why do you have this? So regardless of the type of inflammation present in colitis and the diagnosis, you know, the term that you've been given, in our experience, when those patients come to us with these various types of colitis, there's a tremendous amount of overlap in the causes of their colitis and the causes of their IBS. So fortunately, we found that both have an excellent chance of being successfully treated. So of course, how do you treat IBS and colitis? Well, successfully treating IBS and colitis is a detective process that only starts with the diagnosis. And unfortunately, most people's experience ends with the diagnosis, right? Because your doctors are experts in diagnosing these conditions. So they're great at figuring all that out up to that point, but often not so great at knowing, well, what do you do with the diagnosis after that? How do you treat it? And so you tend to get one size fits all treatments. Now, receiving the diagnosis is good because what it means is it ruled a lot of other things out, right? So that's super helpful, but it doesn't change your symptoms, which is of course what you really want, right? You want to get better, not just give it a name. So at this point, we need to do a deep dive into things like your microbiome of your digestive system and figure out exactly what's in there because we can map that whole thing out as well as we need to thoroughly assess how does your body respond to food? Do you have food allergies? Do you have food intolerances? Do you have food sensitivities? There are ways of figuring all these things out. And this is not the kind of thing that's done by your regular doctor or even by a gastroenterologist. However, these are the kinds of things that cause IBS and colitis. And once we understand all of these variables and how they are affecting your body, then we can create a proper treatment plan and we'll have a much greater chance of successfully solving your problem than just giving you an anti-inflammatory or a one-size-fits-all medication, right? Or diet or supplement regimen, because that's probably not going to work when everybody's getting the same thing. It's much more productive to sort out and treat the very specific cause of your problem. So, for example, if you got a type of colitis, that's not the cause, that's the symptom, right? It's some reason lymphocytes are reacting or eosinophils are reacting or something like that. Those aren't causes, those are symptoms. We need to figure out the cause. And that takes more time and a different kind of specialization than that of the kind of specialization that your gastroenterologist has. And that may sound strange, but their expertise is in doing colonoscopies. They're awesome at that. That's what they're good at. And that's a different expertise than treating most cases of IBS or colitis. Now, if you have colitis or IBS, have hope. I hope you will, really. There is a solution and you can get your life back. And I don't say that lightly. I see it from experience as the founder and medical director of the IBS Treatment Center, because we've worked with over 10,000 patients with these conditions, and we've seen how demoralizing it can be, but we've also seen these patients get better. So don't give up. Do you have IBS or colitis? If you found this video helpful, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to hear more informative content about your health.